What are you doing about closing the digital divide so that all San Franciscans can interact with their local government? Not everyone has an iPad, reads the Chronicle, or watches the news. And they say here, even AM Joy, the show requires a cable subscription. Thank you for knowing that. Um, so what, what, given your unique background, would you suggest to other mayors for outreach to those communities about life-threatening issues? And then I'll also throw a question to Parker about the digital side. Go well, I, I'm so glad someone asked that question because again, it's somewhat, well, maybe I didn't say this, but I grew up in public housing. I lived in public housing for over 20 years of my life. And so before I was supervisor, I had worked on, you know, as we rehabilitated our public housing units, which was my priority when I was on the board of supervisors in San Francisco, uh, we rebuilt, but we also, uh, installed cables to provide free Wi-Fi to the residents there. Um, and it's the thing that I'm most proud of, but also during this pandemic, we know that our kids who may not have access to not only high-speed internet for distance learning, but also computers. And so the work we did with the school district to add high, free high-speed internet to those areas uh, where there are a lot of low-income students in our public school systems was absolutely incredible along with uh, laptops so that they can also participate in distance learning. I think we have to be very deliberate about not only making sure those resources are in these neighborhoods, but the money that I pay for my cable should somehow offset the expense of someone who can't necessarily afford to pay the, 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 the regular expense, because you know they charge a lot of money uh, yeah. for cable and internet and you get the whole little package. And so there has to be, I think, a way in which, you know, we're seeing it play itself out now uh, in San Francisco, but I think we've been doing a really good job and have been a leader on access in uh, many of our, our low income communities, but we also have to make sure that we're holding the providers accountable to provide this resource because they are making a lot of money from their customers who are paying regular rates. And so that should be offset uh, the, the cost and the expense of supporting other communities can be offset in that way. Expanding access to rural broadband has been a huge priority, um, you know, for Republican members of Congress. I know John Katko from upstate New York has been a real leader on that. Um, you know, there's estimates of 35 to 40 percent of rural residents don't have access to high-speed broadband. So that's, that is something that our members have really uh, focused on. Um, in terms of the digital campaigning, um, a lot of phone calls. You know, the prior panel we had Celinda Lake on who was talking about how pollsters um, are actually <laughs> not loving, I don't want to say pollsters are loving this um, stay in place order, but it has been uh, really improved the rates of response on telephone calls. And, um, you know, the Republican campaigns have access to um, the Repu the RNC has built out a huge infrastructure of uh, ability to call from home and they you know you can call right from your cell phone you could be a campaign volunteer while sitting on your couch or at your kitchen table and we've utilized that we have two special elections actually coming up um, next Tuesday and we've utilized that uh, technology in allowing people from coast to coast to call into these districts and remind folks to uh, to vote on either one of the districts is entirely by mail, so make sure you mail in your ballot or um, either mail in or, or turn out in person. So that's been a, a good um, infrastructure piece that we've had in place. 